Good afternoon, folks. There is a new release of Office 365 DSC that just recently hit the PowerShell gallery. We are talking about version 1.0.0.1048. So what does that mean? Well, that means tons of new features. So in order for you to be able to get started with Office 365 DSC, the first thing to do is, well, install the module. So what you need to do is launch a brand new PowerShell console. You probably want to make sure that you're actually running it as an admin. Now, what you can do, let me just zoom in a bit for you folks so that you can all see what I'm typing in. I'm gonna put this a little bigger. Now, because the module is in the PowerShell gallery, that means that from any machine that has internet connectivity, you can simply run the install-module command let and go Office 365 DSC. And I'm just gonna do a four so that it doesn't prompt me to validate that. It's gonna go in, so what it's doing in the background is it's pinging the gallery, get, getting the latest version of the module, and you'll see it being installed. It's gonna go and download also all the dependencies. So we have dependencies on the Microsoft Teams PowerShell, on the SharePoint PNP PowerShell, the Azure AD module. We have dependencies on reverse DSC to be able to extract configuration out of existing tenants. So it should take about 30 seconds to download and install all the dependencies. Once that is done, what I'm gonna get is access to a brand new conlet called export O365 configuration. So we're just gonna wait for the console to finish its execution. Should be any second now. There we go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna clear the screen and you can see that I now have access to this export O365 configuration conlet. Running this by default will launch a graphical user interface that looks like it's straight out of the 90s. I completely understand that it is ugly as it stands currently, but it's practical, right? It was built in PowerShell, so please give us credit there. So what we have here is the list of all the components we can extract from a tenant. Now with the latest version, so with 1048, you're gonna see that there are some components that are gray shaded. This is due to an issue that we have right now with the SharePoint Online Management Shell that doesn't let us extract those components while using the graphical user interface. But don't worry, there is a workaround. We're gonna cover this in just a few seconds. So right now, by default, everything that can be extracted is gonna be available. So you see all the check boxes. One thing that is new with the latest version is that beside if we go and do on select all, all the check boxes are now unchecked. But I can go and easily select a specific workload. This is something we didn't have before. So let's say I just wanna go and extract the security and compliance component. I can just click the checkbox beside that workload and all the resources included are automatically checked. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna provide my user, uh, my global admin account. Now, that's one thing that we need to, um, to clarify. In here, you're seeing that I'm actually putting in an account that's admin non-MFA, so that account doesn't have MFA enabled. We fully support MFA when we extract the configuration. So if I was to use another account that had MFA enabled, I would have to get my, my phone, for example, and do the, uh, the second factor uh, challenge. However, when we're doing the forward way, which is when you configure the server or the tenant at the other end, or when you're doing those consistency checks, we can't support MFA. The reason is simple. Imagine this scenario where you're deploying a configuration over to a remote Office 365 tenant that defines 10 users, 100 site collections. So you go in, you deploy that, you get prompted for MFA, you do the challenge, and then what happens with DSC is that every 15 minutes, we do that consistency check. So we try to reconnect with the tenant. Now, given there is a way to actually cache some of the credentials once you, you've passed that uh, second uh, authentication challenge. However, imagine if like two days from now that consistency check goes in and it prompts you on the phone every time it needs to go and do that authentication. It doesn't make sense. It's not practical, right? So therefore, we don't support MFA for the forward path. But for the extraction piece, we completely support it. So in this case here, I'm just going to go and start the extraction. And we're going to see that it's going to go and load the security and compliance module. We're going to see the progress bar appear. And we're going to see that it's going to go and extract everything that I have in my tenant. That should take roughly 30 seconds. We're going to see all the components. So for example, the compliance cases right now. We're going to see the, everything that has to do with data loss prevention. Uh, the... Um, file plan, retention policies, everything that's in security and compliance is being captured 
from reverse DSC inside of the Office 365 DSC module. We're just going to let it run uh, a bit more. So while this is running, I was telling you that we, we have a little hiccup right now where the user interface can't extract certain components. Those are the uh, sharing settings for SharePoint, the UB sites, and the SharePoint site collections. Those don't work when you're doing it from the graphical user interface. We are actively working on it with the, uh, the, the SharePoint product group. Don't worry about it. But there is a workaround. And this is what we're going to be covering right after this. So I'm done extracting my configuration. I can just go in and do extract. Sorry, I have the French keyboard here. I'm going to do CDSC. That will automatically create my folder with my configuration in there. So compare to previous versions. In previous versions, let's say I want to extract from one tenant and replicate over another tenant. What I had to do was go and modify the configuration data to change the organization name. You no longer need to do that. So what we do is we extract the configuration from one tenant. And when we go and try to, it's at compilation time that you're going to be specifying what the destination tenant is. We're going to be prompting you for your global and min credentials. And what we're going to do is, let's say you extract from tenant1 at dot on microsoft.com. When you go and compile it, if you pass in credentials that are admin at tenant2 dot on microsoft.com, we automatically detect that you're about to deploy against tenant2, right? So you don't need to go and modify anything. You extract and you just recompile with the new credentials and off you go. You can synchronize multiple tenants. Now that configuration has been extracted. We can see that I have everything that has to do with my DLP compliance rule, uh, the, the data loss prevention compliance uh, policies. Everything is in there. Okay. Going back to our extraction. So one thing that is new as well. So we've always supported unattended extractions before. So you can always go and use the quiet switch and then you can pass in the global uh, admin account. Just pass in a PS credential uh, parameter and that will automatically kick off a full extraction of your tenant. That will go and extract the SPO site, so the site collections, the hub site, everything that is not supported through the GUI in this version. The other options, this is something new we introduced, is we now have the workloads switch. And that workload takes an array of values, so you can go and do, all right, so you know what? I want to do SPO and EXO for Exchange Online. So I want to go and extract just those two workloads. That will completely work as well. So those are just some of the few changes we've made as far as uh, uh, new features in version 1048. There are some other changes as well that have been done under the cover. So for example, we now support the GCCH environment. So when we those changes were actually done to one of the underlying module that we use to connect to Office 365. That module is called the MS Cloud Login Assistant. So that module now supports login to GCCH to the US cloud. It supports the Germany cloud, supports the China cloud. It supports all the various uh, federal clouds that we have out there. So we can now go and extract tenant from all of those various Azure environments that we have. So big changes there. Now, as far as the roadmap, we're still working on trying to uh, introduce more resources in there. The one we currently are working on is the webhook subscriptions to be able to go and specify subscriptions for list whenever there are new events that happen on list. We are w looking at doing something around Azure AD DSC, right? So right now we're dealing with groups and users, but all the underlying Azure AD components are not handled by DSC. The team is actively investigating what could be done there to expand the reach of DSC to touch more components in the Azure AD space. Uh, we are starting to work on some of the Power App stuff and the Yammer workload. This is coming, maybe not in the next version, but it's definitely something we are actively working on. And the next thing really, as far as reverse DSC goes, is this idea of prompting you to provide your credentials from the get-go and analyze what you have access to extract. Let me just clarify this. So when you're actually launching the interface like this here, we show you all the options. Sometimes if you provide, so for example, let's say I go in and I provide nick at o365dsc.onmicrosoft.com, for example, this user only has admin access on the SPO workload. So if I try to go and extract this here, I'm just going to get warnings when I do the extraction. It's just going to say you don't have access, you don't have access. So instead of letting you pick all those options and then just prompting you with warnings, what we would like to do is the moment you launch the export O365 configuration graphical user interface, 
prompt you for your credential, analyze what those creden set of credentials have access to, and only show you the, the check boxes for those components. All right, so this is one of the things we're investigating. So, I mean, we're gonna keep you updated. Please make sure you follow the GitHub repository. We're making almost daily changes uh, to the, uh, the code base. We're gonna be looking at doing monthly releases in the, on the PowerShell gallery. If you have any questions, if you have feedback for the team, or if you find any issues with the component, please use the GitHub repository, github github.com slash Microsoft slash Office 365 DSC use the issue tab even if it's just a simple question and that helps us build the knowledge base for other people as well so please go on there make sure you follow the github repository and you can always shoot me a message on twitter as well my twitter handle is at nick n-i-k-c-h-a-r-l-e-b-o-i-s and i wish you folks a good weekend